In this video, we'll be covering PowerView in SharePoint 2013. My name is Tavis Lovell, and I'm a senior SharePoint BI consultant with Rackspace. If you need to reach out to me, you can find me at tavis.lovell at rackspace.com, on my blog at www.tavislovell.com, or on Twitter at Tavis Lovell. In this video, we're going to talk about what PowerView is used for, we'll step through the prerequisites you'll need in order to complete this tutorial, and finally, we'll walk through creating our own PowerView report in SharePoint. PowerView is an easy-to-use ad hoc reporting tool for end users. It allows users to quickly create interactive reports and dashboards from right inside of their web browser with just a few mouse clicks. While this video will be focusing on PowerView reports created in SharePoint, they can also be created inside of Excel 2013 workbooks. In order to leverage PowerView in your SharePoint environment, you will need to have enterprise licenses for both SharePoint and SQL Server. In order to successfully complete this tutorial, you'll need to have the following prerequisites. A Reporting Services 2012 instance configured in SharePoint integrated mode, and PowerPivot configured in your SharePoint environment. Configuration of these services will not be covered in this video, however, they are covered in detail in the Business Intelligence chapter of the Rocks publication titled Professional SharePoint 2013 Administration. Last but not least, you'll need a PowerPivot workbook uploaded to SharePoint. I'll be using the PowerPivot workbook I created in our PowerPivot video, so if you want to follow my exact steps, you'll want to complete the PowerPivot tutorial before watching this video. Before we start the tutorial, let's take a quick look at what our goal is. In this example, we want to create a report that shows internet sales by both category and subcategory. In addition, we want users to be able to easily flip between different product categories. Along the bottom, we want to show internet sales by country. In addition, we want these two areas to be aware of each other. So that if I click on the road bike subcategory in the top chart, the chart containing sales by country will automatically filter itself to show me how much of our sales in each country consists of road bikes. We also want that to work in the opposite direction, so that if I click a country, our subcategories are filtered. Finally, I want several customer demographic filters available in our report. Now that we've got our goal in mind, let's build this report from the ground up. To start creating our PowerView workbook, we're going to want to navigate to our SharePoint site and then to our Power Pivot Gallery. And on our Power Pivot Workbook, we should see an icon at the top right that will allow us to open up the Power View design area. So let's go ahead and click on that. And then all we need to do to start building a report is really start selecting data. So we'll expand Internet Sales and then select sales amount and then we're also going to select product category uh, which is called English product category name here and then English product subcategory name as well now I'm going to do a quick bit of formatting here I'll select this data grid and then up the font size a little bit and we'll drag this over so it covers the whole top part of the screen and while I'm here, I might as well add the title as well. All right. So to change this data grid to a bar chart, we'll want to select the data grid. And then on the design tab, we can select bar. Now, you'll remember on our original report, we had product category going across the top. So we can make that happen by going down to the axis and dragging English product category name from Axis up to tile by. And then we'll see our categories up at the top. So that takes care of the top part of our report. For the bottom part, we'll go ahead and select an empty space on our canvas by clicking on it. And then we'll go back to Internet Sales and select Sales Amount. And we'll expand geography and select English country region name. 
Again here I'll do a quick bit of formatting by dragging these to take up the full screen width. And I'll up the font size a little bit. And then I'll click back on the data grid and this time I'm going to select column. And that's really all we need to do. All the interactions we saw in the original demo are already built in. So if I select bikes and then road bikes, we'll see that our sales by country automatically filters. And that is also true in the reverse direction. The last thing we want to do here is add a set of demographic filters to our report. To do that, we'll scroll up to the customer table and expand that. And then we're just going to drag each of these items over to the filter area. And that's really all there is to it. Uh, all these filters will automatically work on our report. And we've written a pretty robust report with absolutely no code whatsoever. The last thing we want to do here is save this report out to SharePoint. To do that, we'll go up to File and save as, although you could also export it to PowerPoint. And then uh, we're just going to call it report one for demo purposes and click save. Now if we navigate back to our Power Pivot gallery, we should see our Power V report. And right there it is. If we want to view it again, all we have to do is click on it. Well, I think that pretty much wraps it up for our PowerView tutorial. Once again, my name is Tavis Lovell, and thanks for watching.